Okay, so uh, we will continue with this uh, uh, with the ongoing discussion uh, that is to try to explain um, uh, why it is that the inverse image of a point uh, under a covering map uh, is set theoretically bijective to the fundamental group of the uh, space being covered the base space ok. So uh, in this connection yesterday I was um, uh, uh, I was talking about the uh, the covering homotopy theorem. So, uh, that is the fundamental theorem uh, that we need to understand this situation. So, let me recall it ok. So, uh, so, so let me write that down here covering homotopy theorem. So, in the case of the covering homotopy theorem what you have is um, of course, um, uh, 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 so is it uh, so p uh, from x tilde to x is uh, uh, is a covering space and uh, um, i is the the open unit interval uh, the closed unit interval in uh, in the on the real line and uh, z is uh, is a connected uh, locally connected connected uh, uh, topological space uh, which I'll further assume to be compact. Uh, right. So, um, of course, uh, please remember that uh, all the um, uh, topological spaces that we are going to consider, um, we are going to assume that they are all housed off. We are going to assume they are, uh, uh, you know, arcwise connected, locally arcwise connected, um, and also even locally simply connected. Uh, but of course, uh, uh, with Z. Uh, you can make a little bit of relaxation namely instead of uh, arcwise connected you can just assume z is connected and instead of assuming locally arcwise connected you can assume that it is locally connected which of course means that every uh, neighborhood of a point contains an a, a sub neighborhood which is connected and uh, and of course i am assuming it's compact and the situation is as follows um, so you are uh, you are given uh, a homotopy f from um, z cross i into uh, the the base space of the covering space ok. And uh, so, uh, this homotopy uh, at time t equal to 0 is going to be a certain map from z to x time being thought of as the variable in i ok and at uh, time t equal to 1 it is going to give me another map from z to x ok and the homotopy is just the uh, expression of the fact that the map at time t equal to 0 uh, is uh, is being deformed continuously into the map at time t equal to 1 ok. So, this map at time t equal to 0 which is a map from z to x suppose there is a lifting of that map that is already prescribed ok. So, and uh, a lifting um, g0 from z to <coughs> x tilde of f0 uh, uh, of uh, where <coughs> where you know of course f sub t of x is f of x comma t. Uh, so this is the this is the standard notation. Okay, this is the notation that we are we are using. Uh, so, um, then uh, so basically f tells you that uh, um, f is a homotopy from the uh, between the map f sub 0 and f sub 1 ok which are two maps from uh, z to x 
and the initial map f sub 0 has a lift g sub 0 okay which means uh, lifting means of course this map followed by p is going to give me f0 so uh, so let me write that that is uh, g0 um, followed by p is f0 okay and what the covering homotopy theorem tells you is that the whole homotopy capital f can be lifted to a homotopy capital g into uh, the covering space x tilde uh, so uh, what is happening is that each of these f sub t's are being lifted to g sub t's and all the g sub t's with of course g sub 0 being the one that is already prescribed all the g sub t's they fit into a g which is which turns out to be a homotopy uh, on x tilde okay so that is the covering homotopy theorem. Uh, <coughs> then uh, uh, we can find find a homotopy g which will be from uh, z cross i into x tilde lifting f so this is the covering homotopy theorem okay so uh, if i want to put all of this in um, in a single diagram uh, uh, so one can write z cross i so we have um, so this is x this is f and then uh, this is the, the covering map this is the covering space this is the base space which is being covered by this top space and uh, then uh, the covering homotopy theorem says that uh, you can find there exists a g which is a homotopy into x tilde uh, such that g followed by p is just f so i put this circular arrow to tell you that this map followed by this map is equal to this map okay um now um uh, we would like to uh, and and then there is one more statement uh, um, there is one more part of the uh, covering homotopy theorem which says that uh, you know if uh, so let me write that down uh, moreover if <coughs> f is uh, so let me say uh, so let me write this down if f is stationary Uh, for a fixed z uh, belonging to z and uh, t uh, in some sub interval of 0 1 okay then uh, g uh, can also be uh, then g of uh, uh, then g can also be chosen be chosen to be likewise stationary what does this mean this means that is if you know f of z comma t f of z comma t is constant for uh, t in j which is in i j a sub interval j a sub interval okay then uh, then g of z comma t can also be chosen chosen to be constant for t belonging to j in i so this is the uh, uh, this is the this is the additional statement okay so um, uh, now what i'm going to do is um, I try to uh, first of all derive certain consequences of this uh, uh, covering homotopy theorem okay and then uh, 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 these cons these, uh, these con consequences will tell you certain things first of all uh, they will tell you that uh, uh, if you have a covering uh, map 
then it has the unique path lifting property ok. Uh, that is one uh, important consequence. Then it will also explain uh, why the fiber that is the inverse image of any point uh, uh, is going to look like uh, at least set theoretically uh, like the fundamental group of the base in the case the covering is a universal covering ok. So, this, uh, these are the two consequences that I would like to uh, immediately explain. So, what I will do is um, I will first uh, so, so let us see some consequences. So, uh, before I continue I am going to go over to the right side of the board and try to uh, explain uh, that the fundamental group uh, the, the, the operation of uh, forming the fundamental group of a topological space is what is called uh, uh, you know it is called a covariant functor ok uh, from the category of topological spaces to the uh, category of uh, groups. So, uh, um, I will not uh, go uh, into a serious definition of what a category is basically a category in mathematics consists of objects and morphisms. So, the usual categories that we are um, we are familiar with are for example, category of sets which contains the which, which contains objects as sets and the morphisms are just maps of sets. Then you can also look at categories of uh, for example, uh, groups uh, category of groups which is going to be uh, the category which has objects which are groups and the uh, the morphisms are going to be group home morphisms. Similarly, I can define a category of rings you know category of abelian groups if you want. Uh, then you can also define category of topological spaces the objects are going to be topological spaces and the maps are going to be continuous maps. So, basically the idea of a category is uh, it consists of two data two sets of data one is the objects of the category and the other is the maps between these objects. And uh, the reason why this generalization is so important is because you can have general categories in which neither the neither are the objects really sets and uh, therefore, neither are the maps really maps of sets ok. So, you can form uh, more complicated uh, objects than just sets and you can have for a map something which is not a map of sets, but more data or completely uh, 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 data which is not which does not run. Uh, 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 as our intuition goes ok. So, uh, it is a very important technical tool uh, the the concept of a category ok. And uh, what a functor is is something that maps one category to the to another category. So, since a category consists both of objects and uh, morphisms ok. So, what the functor does is that it op it maps each, each object of the, of the source category to an object of the target category and it maps each morphism of, a, of the source category to a morphism of the target category. And I just want to say that uh, the fundamental group is uh, 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 forming the fundamental group of a topological space gives you a functor uh, which is called covariant uh, a covariant functor from the category of uh, topological spaces to the category of groups ok. So, uh, let me explain that very very quickly. So, um, so you know uh, suppose, uh, suppose uh, so, let me write this as pi 1 of x uh, or let me say pi 1 of dash comma dash <coughs> as a functor and I will put it in brackets as covariant functor So, uh, what does this mean? So, I have on this side the category uh, of topological spaces. and here therefore, the objects are topological spaces uh, and uh, the, the, the morphisms uh, sometimes referred to as the arrows of the category ok. Uh, the morphisms are going to be continuous maps. So, the morphisms are supposed to be uh, uh, arrows going from one object of the category to another object of the category in this case these are continuous maps from one topological space to another topological space. And uh, on this side I have the category of, uh, 
of groups where uh, you know the objects are groups are groups and of course the morphisms are group homomorphisms and uh, <laughs> what does one uh, mean um, there is a functor uh, well in fact I have you know uh, uh, I have to make a further restriction uh, you know when I define the fundamental group this is the homotopy classes uh, of loops uh, that is path starting and at and starting from and ending at a given point. So, I had to fix a ba base point and of course, I told you if your uh, topological space is arcwise connected then all these uh, fund various fundamental groups at uh, based at various points they are all isomorphic ok. So, let us keep track of the base point. So, what I will do is I will make this uh, uh, a little bit uh, uh, more restrictive I will say topological spaces with uh, uh, specified point. So, these are called pointed topological spaces. So, the data is a topological space with a point on it ok. So, so let me put uh, so I will just modify this to pointed what does this mean this means topological spaces with a yeah, uh, with a specified point ok and then uh, the morphisms. Uh, so, if I take two topological spaces uh, they are going to have uh, each one is going to have a point specified and then I do not just consider all continuous maps from this space to that space I only consider those maps which map this point to that point ok. So, uh, continuous maps that uh, that uh, uh, preserve uh, or that respect the respect the uh, specified points. the specified points ok. So, uh, what happens in this case uh, an object an object is going to look like uh, a pair capital X comma small x alright and uh, uh, what is what does my uh, uh, what does my functor do what it does is given given such an object I will get a group namely the first fundamental group at uh, at uh, the point based at the point small x for the topological space capital X ok. So, uh, for a for an object here I am getting an object there which is a group alright and uh, what a functor is supposed to do a functor is a is a generalization of function the notion of function. But uh, of course, a function has to go from one set to another set but here you know uh, the functor goes from something that is much more complicated than a set ok. So, uh, what does it do to uh, so it, so it takes objects to objects and it has to take maps to uh, maps ok. So, uh, what is a map uh, in this category? So, I take another uh, topological uh, pointed topological space namely a topological space capital Y and a point small y in that topological space and of course, uh, I will get uh, the first fundamental group of that topological space based at that given point. And uh, well, I also if I take a if I take a continuous map f, then um, this map is going to take small x to uh, small y, because we are going to take we are only looking at maps the the morphisms are only maps which uh, respect the specified points. Okay, so it it has to map small x to small y. Okay, and what I'm going to say is that here I'm going to get a uh, you know uh, what I should get there it should be a group homomorphism because on this side the the morphisms are group homomorphisms the objects are groups the morphisms are group homomorphisms but on this side the objects are pointed topological spaces maps are continuous maps which pres preserve the specified point. So, uh, given me a map here I should get a map there namely uh, which means that on that side I should get a group homomorphism. What is a group homomorphism people uh, usually write this as f lower star ok and uh, uh, this is supposed to so also written as pi 1 of uh, uh, you know sometimes you can also write it as pi 1 f, f if you want ok. So, um, uh, uh, we write it as pi 1 of f just to show that you know this is uh, what is carried to uh, by pi 1 ok and the more common notation is f lower star, but what is this group form of some it is very very simple uh, give me a loop 
uh, base at x this is the homotopy uh, classes of loops base at x okay uh, and uh, this is the homotopy class of uh, loops based at y small y okay and what I will have to do is give me a loop at x I will have to produce for you a loop at uh, at y and that is a th there is a very easy way of doing it. So you know let me start with uh, so let me let me define this so I start with alpha alpha is an element here so it is an equivalence class uh, of a uh, loop at x and a loop at x is a path starting at x and, at, and ending at x so it is going to be like this so you are going to have alpha so you know alpha is just a map from i to x it is a continuous map from i to x okay with of course alpha uh, of 0 the same as alpha of 1 which is the point small x so this is a loop at x okay and what am I supposed to do from this I am supposed to cook up a loop at y alright and there is an obvious way of doing it what I do is uh, well uh, you know I just uh, follow this up by this map f to y okay and if I take the composition uh, namely so let me rub this and write the alpha here and I take the composition which is just uh, alpha followed by f so that this diagram commutes that means this followed by this is this by definition okay so um, then you know uh, these are continuous maps so alpha f circle alpha is also a continuous map therefore this is also a, uh, a, a, a path in y and you can check that uh, uh, what is f circle alpha of 0 it is going to be f of x which is y and f circle alpha of 1 will also be y so you can see that uh, f circle alpha is uh, at 0 will be the same as f circle alpha at 1 <coughs> and it will be equal to y so uh, this is uh, the obvious way in which given a loop uh, on x based at the point small x I am able to get by composition with f a loop uh, on capital Y based at small y and uh, uh, with a little bit of work you can prove that if you if uh, alpha uh, is changed up to homotopy then uh, uh, f circle alpha will also change up to homotopy so uh, you can check that uh, alpha 1 uh, uh, homotopic homotopic to alpha 2 implies uh, f circle alpha 1 homotopic to f circle alpha 2 and this will ensure that uh, the map uh, gotten by sending alpha to you know uh, to the element f circle alpha uh, is a well defined map okay and you can uh, check that this is in fact uh, uh, a group home of some namely you can check that the identity element goes to the identity element you can check that uh, it preserves the product that so the product here is uh, given by the concatenation of two paths and you can check that you take the concatenation of two paths and then you take the path here that is the same as taking the image of the two paths and then concatenating them so it will be a group home of so you can check that uh, you can also check that uh, uh, f over star is a group home of some this can be checked and in this way uh, you get a functor okay so so this is what uh, and and <coughs> we say it's a functor because we say it's a covariant functor is uh, because the arrows on this side are in the same direction uh, as the arrows on this side uh, you can have functors in which an arrow on this side is transformed to an arrow in the reverse direction okay and uh, those kind of functors will be called contravariant functors um, uh, and you know uh, usually these are the functors that arise when you try to pull back maps okay uh, if you have a if you have a function uh, or a, a function with a certain property on the target space and you give me a map into the target space if I take the pull back of that map I will get you I will get a function on the source space okay so uh, those are the kind of uh, operations that will give rise to contravariant uh, functors but this is a covariant functor okay so um, so given this background uh, the first consequence I want to make is that if you have a covering space okay uh, you take a covering space like this and let us let, let me fix a, uh, a, bay, a point here in, uh, in capital X and a point above it okay 
So, fix, so number 1 fix x belonging to x, small x belonging to capital X, capital X tilde belonging to capital X tilde, small x tilde belonging to capital X tilde with uh, P of uh, capital X tilde is equal to x. That means, you choose a point below and you choose a point above which goes to this point, right. Then you know then the uh, group homomorphism, the group homomorphism um, P lower star which is going to be from the first fundamental group of the top space based at uh, the point x tilde to the first fundamental group of the base space x based at x is uh, is injected okay so the the first consequence is that um, uh, the if you take the uh, map that is going to be induced by the first fundamental group as a functor when you apply it to this uh, this covering map what you will get is a group home of some which is injective. In other words the, the fundamental group of the top space will be identified with a subgroup of the fundamental group of the, of the space below okay that is what this means because once you have an injective group home of some then the source group can be identified with its image which is uh, a subgroup of the target group okay. So, this is the first consequence so, and, and uh, um, it is not very difficult to prove uh, using this um, covering homotopy theorem. So, uh, so let us try to prove it. So, so proof is well um, suppose so I will I'll draw a diagram here. Mm. So, here is uh, so here is my uh, here is my covering space and here is my covering map or covering projection and here is my base space and uh, I have fixed this point small x here and a point above it capital X tilde which is mapped to small x under the projection and uh, what do I have to show I will have to show that if there is a point here uh, if there is an element here that goes to identity namely an element in the kernel then that element has to be nothing else but the identity. So, I have to just say the kernel is ident the identity subgroup. So, I will start with I start with um, uh, an alpha tilde uh, uh, such that that uh, p lower star of <coughs> alpha tilde is uh, uh, p lower star of the element alpha tilde. So, when I say element alpha tilde I should have I should take the equivalence class. So, alpha tilde is a path here alpha tilde is a path here above ok. And I am assuming that the element of the fundamental group defined by this path namely its homotopy class which I denote by putting square brackets is the trivial element here. And what is the trivial element? The trivial element is the constant path at the given point the path which is which just is just the point uh, all the time ok. So, <coughs> the stationary path. So, <coughs> uh, so let P lower star of alpha be C x. So, when I put C x what I mean by C x is uh, this is the constant path at x ok namely the map from the unit from the unit interval closed unit interval to uh, the whole of the interval being mapped just to the point x that is also by definition a path the image is just a point ok. So, it is called the constant path and that is the uh, you see that is going to be the uh, unit element uh, the the identity element for the group below ok. So, suppose this is true ok. Um, uh, but what is the meaning of p lower star of alpha tilde if you go by that definition p lower star of alpha tilde is just alpha alpha tilde followed by p. So, what I am saying what this so uh, this is just the same as saying first apply alpha tilde then apply p then this uh, is the constant path ok. But alpha tilde followed by p let me call this as alpha. Uh, let me call this as alpha and what is alpha you just simply project this path below. So, I am going to get a path here. So, this path is going to be alpha. So, alpha is just 
you just project alpha <coughs> tilde right and uh, uh, um, i'll have to say uh, what i'll have to do is i'll have to tell this that this alpha tilde is uh, is is the trivial element uh, this this e this equivalence class is a trivial element okay and how do i do it i, I make use of the uh, covering homotopy theorem so what i do is the following thing see first of all um, so and and again here i should i should write um, uh, uh, p circle alpha tilde um, alpha tilde is a path above p circle alpha tilde is a path below and then i should uh, strictly speaking take the homotopy class so here also i should and i am calling this p circle alpha tilde as alpha so i should take homotopy class of alpha so what does this last inequality uh, equality tell you it tells you that alpha and cx are homotopic okay so <coughs> this so so we have a homotopy f from um, alpha to cx okay so namely you have uh, so uh, how is it written i write this yes f is a map from i cross i to x such that f of uh, at uh, if i call uh, 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 f of x comma t as f t of x then um, 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 f 0 um, f 0 of x uh, f 0 is just uh, alpha and uh, f 1 is uh, C x ok. This is uh, uh, this is just the uh, homotopy from alpha to C x which exists because of this ok. So uh, mind you uh, if you go back to the covering homotopy theorem uh, uh, to apply the covering of the homotopy theorem I have to replace z by i and uh, well uh, I can do that because the condition on z is satisfied by i i is certainly connected locally connected and compact ok. Uh, so uh, I can apply the covering homotopy theorem and of course to apply the covering homotopy theorem I also need to uh, uh, have a lifting of uh, f0 and you see f0 is alpha and uh, there is a lifting of alpha namely alpha tilde because that is what we started with ok. So uh, uh, put g0 is equal to alpha tilde which is a lifting of alpha which is a lifting of alpha of alpha um, and apply the covering homotopy theorem homotopy theorem theorem with 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 of course uh, capital z equal to i okay so what you what will tell you is that um, uh, uh, you you will get uh, we'll, we we will get a homotopy <coughs> g from uh, g from uh, g zero which is uh, alpha tilde to uh, g one okay so so basically I'm going to have uh, a map I am going to have a diagram like this of course with z replaced by i ok. So I, I am going to have um, uh, so what this is going to tell me is that uh, uh, um, of course uh, g is a lift of f so each g sub t is a lift of f sub t and in particular uh, g1 ok. Uh, is going to be a lift of uh, the constant path. Uh, let me write this down for a moment. So, um, P, uh, so let me think for a minute. Um, yeah, I think there is a problem with notation somehow. I fixed this as x and uh, it is better not to call um, 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 no no um, 
see this x is a fixed point here, um, this point x is a fixed point uh, below and then I am also using x as the, uh, the first variable here okay, which is uh, really bad notation. So, what I should do is uh, uh, let me call, let me put z, no? uh, it is better to put z, let me put z and assume that z is uh, uh, in i. Okay? So, this is very uh, just to avoid notation, uh, notational complications. Um, yeah. So, uh, notice that um, uh, f f sub t uh, um, I think the easiest way to do it is first show that uh, given a path below there is unique lift. So, uh, uh, um, and g 1 is lift of uh, c x it has to be c x tilde because that is that is uh, one lift and that has to be the unique lift. So, essentially that is what I have to say. So, um, uh, it appears that um, so uh, so the claim is so the claim is claim is that uh, 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 g one g one is just the constant path at uh, uh, x tilde. The claim is g one is a constant path at x tilde. Once you fix w once you prove this claim, what you are going to prove is that uh, g is going to give you a homotopy between alpha tilde and uh, constant path at x tilde and that that is the same as saying that this homotopy class alpha tilde is uh, uh, the trivial element uh, the, the identity element of this group which is what you want to say that the kernel is uh, trivial. Okay. So, the claim is g 1 is uh, the constant part at x tilde and uh, how does one verify this one verifies this by using this uh, this property namely that you have uniqueness of lifting if you have a local homeomorphisms. Okay. So, um, you see uh, g 1 the path the, the path g 1 uh, uh, of z is just g of 1 comma z okay and uh, you know if i put um, um, z is equal to 0 g1 of 0 is going to be g of 1 comma 0 <coughs> okay and um, you can see that this is uh, uh, going to um, uh, g of 1 comma 0 is going to be uh, simply x delta and uh, uh, and you also know so so in other words what happens is from i to um, i to x tilde there are two maps one is the path g1 uh, z going to g1 z okay then uh, there is the other map which is the constant path which is c sub x tilde okay and uh, the if you follow it by p what I get uh, in both cases I get uh, the, the constant path below okay. So, uh, it means that both g 1 and c x tilde are liftings of c x okay. So, there are two maps uh, which lift c x and they agree at, uh, 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 at z equal to 0 and uh, of course, this source space <coughs> is connected. So, uh, by the uniqueness of lifting you will get g 1 is equal to c x tilde and, and that completes the proof. Okay. <coughs> so, uh, uh, uniqueness of lifting uh, implies um, g 1 is equal to c x tilde. And once you have this, uh, you are just saying that uh, g is a, uh, home, g is of course a homotopy from g zero to g one. So you are just saying that uh, 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 the alpha tilde you started with is 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 homotopic to c x tilde, and which means that uh, uh, the homotopy classes are, are the same. And 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 this is enough to tell you that p lower star is injective. So, um, uh, 
So that is supposed to indicate end of a proof uh, following various books. Uh, normally you, you would have a solid block there but I do not want to fill it with chalk. Uh, so uh, well so th th this is the first important consequence. The when you have a covering space the fundamental group above uh, uh, its image in the fundamental group below uh, uh, the image it can be identified with its, ima with its image because the induced map is injective it is an injective group homomorphism. <coughs> uh, and in particular uh, notice that um, if x tilde to x is a universal covering then x tilde is simply connected therefore the fundamental group above is trivial okay and therefore the image of uh, this uh, in the fundamental group below is going to be just the trivial subgroup okay. So this is the first consequence uh, then uh, let me write down the second consequence which we have more or less seen here but uh, anyway let me write it out. The second consequence is that uh, um, a covering space has uh, the unique path lifting property okay. Uh, any covering space, any covering map if you want has the uh, unique path lifting property. So what does this mean? It means uh, uh, proof uh, given so you are given uh, this covering space uh, and I am given a path alpha okay then uh, alpha is say a path uh, uh, starting at a, a particular point of it, x and ending at a certain particular point of x so alpha uh, uh, starts at alpha of 0 and uh, uh, ends at alpha of 1. So if I if I draw a diagram it is something like something like this I have alpha here uh, this alpha this point is alpha of 0 this point is alpha of 1 okay and uh, so this is in x and in the covering space suppose you fix for me yep yeah a, a point above alpha of 0 that means you fix a pre image of alpha of 0 okay. So if you want let me call this alpha of 0 as x and I will call this point above as x tilde with, with p of x tilde uh, p of x tilde going to x being equal to x okay. So x tilde is a point that I have chosen above okay and what is the unique path lifting property it says that given a path here you can find a path there there exists a path alpha tilde above which lies uh, above this this path namely that path followed by p is going to give you this path that path projects down to this path okay and further that this path above is unique okay. Of course the uniqueness of that path would follow because of the uniqueness of lifting property that is always true of a local homeomorphism as I told you yesterday. So, uh, because if you have two paths uh, both starting at the same point and going down to the same path below the uniqueness of lifting will tell you that these two paths are the same. So I uh, will just have to show you existence of a lifting given uh, up, uh, an initial point above okay and how do you get that you get that in the following way namely what you do is that uh, you apply again the covering homotopy theorem okay but this time think of z as a one point space okay. So take z take z uh, uh, we so let me write this here we want we want alpha tilde uh, a path uh, starting at a uh, prescribed x tilde over x. Uh, that that um, lies that lies over alpha. So you want an alpha tilde that lies over alpha, namely alpha tilde projects down to alpha, and this alpha tilde should start at x tilde. Okay. Now uh, you apply apply the covering homotopy theorem.
uh, with uh, z is equal to uh, say z not uh, one point space okay you take for z one point space uh, which is uh, a, in a in a uh, in every way uh, kind of compact connected and locally connected <laughs> because there is only one point there is nothing to check okay and uh, um, so you can apply it to uh, uh, apply this situation uh, apply the covering homotopy theorem to this situation so I get uh, this z0 cross i so this uh, this map alpha which is a map from i to x can also be thought of as a map from z0 cross i to x just that alpha you just uh, make alpha do not care uh, about this z0 okay. So, it is supposed to a function of several variables need not depend on a certain variable it is still a function okay. So, uh, so this still makes sense as a map like this and the covering homotopy theorem will tell you that uh, uh, that is going to be an alpha tilde okay which uh, uh, which is a lift of alpha and uh, with alpha tilde of 0 uh, already prescribed as x tilde and lying over alpha of 0 which is x okay. So, apply the covering homotopy theorem with this to get to get a uh, uh, to get the path path uh, alpha tilde okay. So, uh, so the moral of the story is uh, uh, the covering homotopy theorem uh, also tells you uh, that you can lift paths and uh, the covering being a local homeomorphism ensures that the paths uh, that you lift are unique because uh, the initial point has already been prescribed okay. <coughs> so, um, yeah so, so that is the end of proof of this statement um, um, the third consequence uh, uh, is finally the consequence that uh, 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 one of the things that we were trying to understand namely why the fiber over a certain point is uh, uh, is at least bijective to uh, the fundamental group below in the case of a universal covering. So, uh, there is a more general statement which is valid for any covering and that is that is going to be consequence 3. So, so let me write that down. Um, so, let me write that here. So, consequence 3 um, for each for each uh, x in x uh, um, the group pi 1 of capital X based at small x <coughs> acts on the fiber p inverse of x over x. and there is a, a natural identification of the coset space pi 1 of x comma x comma capital X comma small x uh, divided by uh, uh, p lower star of pi 1 of x tilde comma small x tilde where of course uh, um, x tilde is a point uh, of x tilde over x okay. There is a identification of this coset space uh, with uh, um, with uh, with the fiber. Okay. So, uh, so what is really happening is uh, that when you take a when you take a covering space situation, you have x here, and you give me a point x. Okay, then 
in x tilde there are going to be several points uh, lying above uh, there that are all going to go to this point under the under the covering projection and uh, these points are going to constitute the fiber the inverse image of this point here uh, in x tilde and uh, what this uh, what this statement says is that the fundamental group below is going to permute the set uh, of points in the fiber it is going to permute the fiber okay that means it is going to act as uh, uh, a set of uh, it is going to act as uh, uh, permutations on this on this set which is a fiber okay and uh, uh, which means each element of the fundamental group below is going to give rise to a bijective map of the fiber onto itself okay and further uh, if you take uh, so the consequence one told you that uh, the image of the fundamental group above is a subgroup of the fundamental group below so I can take this uh, quotient but of course the subgroup need not be normal so it is not really a quotient group but uh, if uh, it still makes sense as a coset space you can either take it as space of right cosets or if you want as a space of left cosets it does not matter okay. So you take this coset space the fact is that this coset space is the same as uh, it can be bijectively uh, identified with the fiber and in fact this, identif this identification actually comes by the natural uh, so called orbit map okay. So what is happening is that you take the orbit of x uh, you take the orbit of x tilde okay and uh, uh, the orbit of x tilde will be the whole fiber okay and uh, the, uh, the stabilizer of x tilde namely the subgroup which uh, of uh, uh, elements which will fix x tilde is going to be those which are in the subgroup therefore g uh, the, the group mo modulus stabilizer uh, will be canonically isomorphic to the orbit okay so we are we are going to think of <coughs> p inverse x as the orbit of x tilde <coughs> uh, uh, as the orbit of x tilde uh, under this action okay. So, uh, so what does this mean um, uh, let me read it for a, for a minute uh, under the action induced under this action induced by the so called orbit map okay. So, um, so let us stop for a moment and uh, try to understand what it means for uh, the universal covering if you take a universal covering then you know the the uh, the covering space is uh, simply connected so the fundamental group above is trivial okay therefore its image below is also going to be the trivial subgroup so this is just going to reduce to the fundamental group below and what this will tell you is that the fiber over a point is canonically identified with the fundamental group uh, based at that point okay and uh, this is so so you get now a picture of the universal covering space which looks like this um, uh, okay so uh, let me rub this for a, so that I can uh, I can draw a little picture so you get a picture like this you have you have uh, you have x and if you have the x tilde universal I put sub I put the subscript universal to say that it is a universal covering space then it looks like this you have a point x and what you have about that is uh, uh, in the space x tilde is just pi 1 of capital X base at x okay like this for various points if you take another point x prime you are going to have a copy of the fundamental group of x base at x prime okay and in this way this uh, the the universal covering is fibered over the base space and the fibers are exactly set theoretically in a very natural way not in some haphazard or arbitrary way in a very natural way each fiber is precisely a copy of the fundamental group uh, based at the point over which the fiber lies 
okay. So, you get this kind of uh, a very beautiful picture uh, 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 which makes which which portrays uh, you know uh, X tilde over X as a vibration containing the fibers all being uh, fundamental groups at, at various points and of course if you uh, if you are going to assume X is R quest connected which we have then all these are all going to be isomorphic you know the fundamental group based at different points are all going to be isomorphic so uh, essentially what you get is this uh, this, this this fibered kind of uh, situation okay. So, um, so that is so you can see uh, that this is what we saw when we looked at the case of uh, you know the complex structure on a cylinder or complex structure on a torus we found that you take any point below the inverse image uh, somehow turned out to be bijective to the fundamental group below and the reason for that is uh, because of this consequence okay and uh, this consequence uh, can be also <coughs> uh, derived from uh, these the earlier consequences and the covering homotopy theorem okay. So, uh, uh, I will try to do that in the next lecture.